Hello. I started this gangsta sh and this the motherfucking banks I get. Hello. I started this gangsta sh and this the motherfucking banks I get. Villain blows up your spot. Take your notebook, your bitch, and your clock. Hello everyone, my name is Bradley, I have a Brad Taste of Music. Now, K-12, through apparently there is a movie attached to this that we will not be watching. The reason being is the Melanie Martinez fan base already wants me dead, right? And I don't want to actually give them uh, ammunition to, to actually cause that to happen. As you can see here, this movie, not only is it free on YouTube, but there is a way to pay for it for some reason. You could, you could listen and watch the movie entirely for free, or you can click this and watch and pay for the movie. That makes no fucking sense. But apparently, yes, there's an entire movie around this uh, around this album where I guess we get to see the metamorphosis of the character of uh, Melanie Martinez going from little widow baby all the way to 12th grade. But I'll tell you right now, even if, even if the movie I was allowed to watch it, I don't know if I can handle an hour and a half of watching Melanie Martinez dressed up like a little girl. I don't think my brain could handle that. I think that that would kill me. Now, this is the conclusion of the series of reacting to Melanie Martinez's content. I know, I know, it's so sad, but it has to reach an end at some point. The point of why I'm basically hammering this in so much is Melanie and her fan base have gotten away with a lot. A lot of really bad stuff, and the problem is, is it's so toxic that it's pushed everyone away, and nobody wants to deal with it. They've won, essentially, and hopefully with this series, I'm pointing some light onto this artist and this community for being, uh, I'll just say, absolute dog shit, so, um, yeah. Now, with that being said, does it mean that I automatically think I'm gonna hate all the music? No, I don't. I hated the last two projects I listened to, but I don't think it means I'm automatically gonna hate this project. You never know. Okay, but stop everything. All right, stop the music, stop the music. This came out four years after Crybaby. That means that Melanie Martinez had four years to reconsider this as being a bad idea and didn't, and instead doubled down on the whole baby aesthetic. Instead of seeing this character as offensive, they decided it's a good idea to make a sequel with a movie with her dressed like a little girl. Now, that's pretty bad. That's pretty bad, all right? I, I ain't gonna lie. I, I, I have very few things I can uh, defend about that. The movie sucks, by the way. Well, that's not what IMDb says, okay? It has an overwhelming 6.4 out of 10 on IMDb. Melanie was someone who uh, I listened to fairly casually as a kid. The vibe of music seems cool. It's almost cathartic, but now I see how disingenuous it all comes from. Coming from someone, uh, and it hurts coming from someone with an abusive father. Yeah unfortunately but uh but yeah this is with people spamming a hundreds to get this number higher it's at a 6.4 which is honestly extremely concerning now speaking of look i'm not saying to go and do this all right and i really i really don't think that you should go do this but i think it's worth pointing out that the score of crybaby since my review has dropped seven points seven points that is fucking insane that is absurd that and i i'd like to assume that that's from people actually listening to the album and deciding on their own that it's bad <laughs> but, but like yeah as you can see it's, it's not looking too good uh here so i'm not going to say you can't rate the album negatively i'm just saying like if you do rate the album negatively make sure it's actually your opinion and that you actually listen to the album and come to your own conclusions or else you're no better than people spamming hundreds on the imdb page okay for me of course i had to suffer through this album i gave it a one out of ten i said fucking kill me all right, see, now that's that's a little bit different, all right, because I actually suffered through this shit. What I'm saying is, like, you know, if you're going to do it, do it right. With that being said, K-12, through that's right, it's actually an album. It's not just a movie, and it's a very successful album. It's not as successful as her previous work. Um, it's pretty damn close, though. I mean, these numbers are pretty on, on board here, but, I mean, uh, wheels on the bus... The Principal, Show and Tell, Nurse's Office, Drama Club. Oh, oh, God, not the Drama Club. Oh, God. Detention, Teacher's Pet. I've heard bad things about Teacher's Pet. So yeah, it's all about school. You know, it's little old baby, baby Melanie Martinez becoming an adult, I guess, but not really. 
Today is Good Friday, meaning that the holiday of Jesus. Shut the fuck up. It's my motherfucking birthday today. That's right. It's my birthday, bitch. Hello. I started this gangster shit. And to celebrate my birthday, here's what I want to do. I want to finish listening to this song. Of a trunk to moving this far up. Now we got the whole world starstruck. Made a million plus and still don't give a motherfuck. Motherfucker, I'm Dre, bitch. Hello. I started this gangster shit. And this the motherfucking thanks I get. Hello. I started this gangster shit. And this the motherfucking thanks I get. There has been a lot of negativity that has come through this video series of covering Melanie Martinez towards me, towards my community, towards my partner. And yeah, it's a lot, which is also part of the reason why it's ending. As much as I'd like to fight this good fight till the end, endlessly remind you that there are still people out there who are essay survivors, who are shut down by large fan bases like this. Um, unfortunately, there's only so much I can do. I can happily bring it up every once in a while. Holy shit, yo, Screegal Eagle. Oh my God, thank you. Oh my God, Screegal. My point being, there's only so much I can do at this point. And we do have to cap it off at a, at a certain moment. All right, but here's the thing. I think that we, I think that we, uh, we did a pretty good thing here. So, you know, with that being said, what do you say we listen to this album? You guys excited? What do you guys think this album's going to be out of 10? What, what, what are your predictions? I want to see. Four, three, zero. Damn, I don't see a single number over a four. There's only one way to find out. Thank you. Track one, Wheels on the Bus. Okay, so I already want to rip my hair out. That's always a good sign. It's it's a literal interpolation of Wheels on the Bus. Okay, here we go. Oh, man. I remind you, four years has passed since Crybaby. Four years to reevaluate all life decisions. I'm just looking out the window and it's cold outside. There are two boys yelling behind. Okay. You know what's so funny? I had a dream that Coco Melon released an album and it was on album of the year and it had like an average score of like a 12 out of 100. Counting trees as they pass me by and I'm trying not to look across the aisle Cause my is letting Dan put his hand up her skirt and she's got her Bro, it's kindergarten. Wait, hold on. What? And down his pants. Okay, so we're already off to a bad start. It seems like it's even more sexual this time around. Uh, yeah, this is, uh, this is, this is great. The driver sees it, I know he's peeking in the rearview mirror, he says nothing. I remind you again, these are kindergartners. Uh, second of all, all right, second of all, this reminds me of, uh, the kind of writing that you would get from, like, uh, Onision's books that he used to write. I remember watching, uh, Strange Aeon, Aeons or whatever, going through those. Yeah, it seems like the same sort of, like, fantasizing about this shit and then oh my god look and there's the doing awful things as kindergartners and the bus driver and everyone but her you know it's like everyone's fucked but her you know what i'm saying i'm getting the same sort of vibe on that i'm just saying i'm just saying i'm saying nothing no one's watching She's carrying the weight of her entire self-absorbed world on her shoulders, you guys. We need to feel bad for her. Knowing that Melanie Martinez came from The Voice, I can imagine people seeing that she ended up doing something so edgy and out there probably made them go, whoa, this is amazing. This is the best thing I've ever heard. She made K-12 and say she touched those kids. When shit hits the fan. Do I still have that sound bite? That nigga gave us our Carly. You say he touched those kids. When shit hit the fan, then you still a fan. <coughs> well, I'ma light it up and pass it. Puff, puff, and pass it. Don't be a dick and baby sick. Come on, just pass it over here. Wow. Soon's got his ass in the glass. And I hate him. Drive a hit a bump fast. Wow, this is uh, this is amazing, you guys. We're we're living in edgy, edgy pre-K bullshit era. This is this is beautiful. This is what the kids love, huh? Melanie wrote this album well before it was actually released. She delayed it. Uh, oh, to make a movie out of it. Okay, that does give some uh, some good context. Yeah, I I hope you guys like 
music that's edgy for the sake of being edgy while also at the same time sexualizing children because that seems to be what we're getting here this is this is amazing guys this is a plus material I know the driver sees it. production is great i mean i don't know what else you want me to say what you actually want me to talk about the sound of this album it sounds like well-produced pop music i can't you hate being sober man i hate being sober that's a good idea we should listen to that that's a that's a banger at least chief keith doesn't pretend to be a kindergartner you know what i mean You know what's so funny about this is I'm only making my case worse that I know what I'm talking about because realistically Melanie Martinez fans will hear this, they will hear this music and use that as fuel uh, to the fact that I don't know at all what I'm talking about, about uh, musical um, artistry and, and musical progression and, and chord progression, so probably not a good uh, str strategical move. Yeah, if you like listening to children's music become sexualized, then congratulations. First of all, make sure that you that your address is not public information for the FBI. And second of all, all right, then you're probably going to enjoy this song. Red headphones. Having Dog. said, it's not like the sound of the song is anything terrible. I actually get what it's going for thematically, uh, and it paints a very strong picture of what it's trying to trying to portray. For better or for worse. <laughs> It's not trying to sexualize children. I know that. But it comes off as disingenuous. So the very adult themes for very childlike situations is horrible. Bro, the kindergarten be smoking Zaza to that new fucking Melanie Martinez. You know what I'm saying? They be getting high. They be like going fucking nutso to it. Uh, you know, I say uh, that that was pretty boring. I think we should take another Chief Keef break. What do you say? Hey, yes, sir. I ain't talk to schools and waiting on a transfer. Send a pussy boy to me, my ancestors. Smack the rest, Hop out the car, flexing like Sylvester. No, sir. This is put up in an IA roaster. I know my fucking shoulder. Anyways, classic. All right, guys. Now we got to get back to K 12. I'm sorry. I know. I know. Boo, boo. Listen. All right. I'm, I'm sorry. I know. I know, guys. I, I apologize. We have to finish listening to this 13 song album. We're on track two. All right. It'll be over in no time. Next song, Class Fight. Let me guess. So the bus, uh, the bus is full of losers. Full of posers and Melanie's the only one who's there who knows what she's think talking about. And now we're in class fight. Let me guess. She's going to be the uh, the neutral party here while everyone else is fighting around her, right? Is is that what this is going to be? You know, because she's just like the quiet, observative, smarter than everyone kid who's just like watching everything uh, go down around her. No, she fights the mean girl. Oh, I see. Because that would be... Now that that now that would be in an Onision book. I guess I guess I, I got it a little backwards. She had a boy wrapped around her finger tie. I fell in love with him, but he wasn't in my life. She was kissing Brandon, I got jelly. Ew. I just waited. Wait, hold on. I remember when the album was delayed for the film, a ton of Melanie fans had a fit and leaked the entire album. Damn, that really says a lot. That really says, that just says a lot right there. Wow. You guys like these sound effects? She was kissing Brandon, I got jelly. Her shoes R. Kelly. I just waited till a recess to make her pay. Mommy, why do I feel sad? Should I give him away or feel this bad? No, 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 don't you choke. Daddy John didn't go for the throat. For the throat, for, for the throat. God, with the fucking oh. Her face was locked up and my hands were bloody. We were in the playground, things were getting muddy. She broke us up after I broke her. Oh, 
this must have been uh yeah wow you hear that breadstick sound effect this was uh she she decided to take that and go and run with it all the way on her new project i don't see this kindergarten uh this character as a kindergartner i think the title of the album just applies at school it doesn't make it better though i don't think the childish behavior of of all of this shit makes it better or the reinterpretation of school like wheels on the bus really implies anything older than age five either so you know that's i think that that's also a problem is like the 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 still child box sound of everything like i'm telling you right now you know what teenagers are listening to you know what teenagers are listening to okay they're listening to chief keith I, i'm just saying I'm a gorilla in a fucking school Gonna pull up to the zoo, nigga So, nigga, who the fuck is you? I don't know, nigga, no, nigga Mommy, why do I feel sad? Should I give him away or feel this bad? So there are th some things I actually like about this song, and I think it's worth mentioning that there are points that I like. First of all, I really like the sound of this track overall. I like the ethereal vibe that this album is going for, where it does feel like there is something very dreamy. A and it's clearly like a, a fake aesthetic. Like, I feel like with the last project, it, it seemed like she was trying to sell drama and not trauma, sorry, trauma as like something that really happened here. It seems very obvious that this is just made up garbage. Listen to this entire album, ready for myself for the stream, including the deluxe version. I don't blame you if... It's only, see, here's the thing. It's like, I think this song does a lot of stuff really annoyingly, but I also think that it's not the worst thing she's done. It's red. Dog. Films. Still, I don't enjoy the track, but I do think that this is still, uh, like, at least more understandable than, like, the previous one, even, even though I don't like it. I think that's slightly more, I guess, uh, like, at least that previous song made more sense as, like, a story. Next song, The Principal. Oh, I see, because now got in a class fight, bloodied up people. You know what it also is? You know what it probably is? Maybe I relate to the song, because back in my day, okay, back in my day, oh, man, you have no idea. Like, there were those kids, you know what I'm saying? Like, you might have been the kid in the class who was sitting quiet while another one of those kids was just, like, disturbing the peace, swearing, white kids saying the N-word in fourth grade, you know, shit like that. I was the kid who saw that, and I was like, hey, fuck is wrong with you then i'd get in trouble every other week that that was me so maybe i understand maybe i under i know back in my day thank you for joining the bread army Crin cringe politics bro you're literally biden fuck you mean cringe politics anyways the principles about trump i'm the president you hear it's gonna rain it's gonna Sneaky kitty, money seeking, always keeping, fucking creeping, got it on the down low. It's how you think you always speak it. What if I had told your mother? It's not just me, it's everybody who thinks that you're fucking ugly when you come and hurt us just so you can get your money. Bro, you know that, like, Melanie Martinez fans are listening to this and, like, yes, slay, queen, slay, slay, we will dox and harass for you, slay. I want to add, because this explains some of the behavior of her fan base, but it seems that when people were critical of her music, she would immediately play the you are just misogynistic card against critics, which is, again, the most deranged range psycho fucking thing to say from someone who does no research about anybody especially me man god damn look at my favorite artists look at my favorite albums and tell me i'm misogynistic no you just suck Not only did she not have a tough childhood, but she had probably the most fortunate adulthood you could ever have with making it big. Like, and basically she was like hit with the most fortunate circumstances you ever could be hit with as an adult. So like, maybe make songs about that instead of pretending like you give a shit, you know? Guy, all you want is cash and hype. Brad's cult of personality, you seem bitter. I am a little bit bitter, that's true. I am bitter. Oh, 
I just caught on what was happening. I was too busy reading chat. Oh God. Where's the principal? Where's the principal? Complicated, overrated. You're fixated. I'm elated by the Yo, that's cool, motherfucking boss, nigga. You know nothing about it. Okay, so basically she turned politics into and she babyfied it. Okay, that's that's makes about as much sense as a Melanie Martinez song. Okay. I was never taught what laws there are. I was never taught what laws there are. Let me repeat, I was not taught the laws for the country I live in, but I know how kids can get killed as women. I like how this sounds like Roblox outro music. I remind you, this is fucking 2020 this came out like oh it's 2019 well i thought it was 2020 it's oh no it is 2019 it's 2019 regardless 2019 all right literally roblox outro music like literally i i can understand though this album being complete for a while and not being released though so that might also be a reason for that but like bro like what is that one song that's like yeah that's what i'm thinking of <laughs> Where's the principal? Where's the principal? Where's the principal? In front door. I'll try to make you listen, but you won't. I know you brought light to the allegations, but I think it's important to note that Martinez conducted herself awfully, awfully, even if the allegations are fault by uh, failing to call out her fans' toxicity. Dynamic, that is the most base thing you've ever said. That is exactly correct. And I feel like this is a very important point, and I'm so glad that you brought this up. Uh, Martinez, even if the allegations were not true, the way that this entire situation was handled and the way that her fans were like weaponized against the victim are just like, like just in general, this entire situation is just so horrifically handled that like there is no way in which Melanie looks good in it. And I'm shocked that anyone can leave this situation supporting Melanie. Uh, anyways, this entire thing sounds like, um... Even though it's supposed to be political, it just reminds me of her weaponizing her fan base. Honestly, quite literally so. I personally don't like the song because it reminds me of that. Dog. Even though that's entirely not the point. It's, it sounds like some sort of subliminal mind control to like her 12-year-old army to go dox and harass anyone who doesn't agree with her. I'm sorry, but it straight up sounds like that to me. The K-12 building looks like the fashionably late album cover. Oh, whoa, hold on. Yo, I think he's cooking. Wait, he's cooking. Wait a sec. Yo, he's cooking. Hold on a second. They, they're cooking. Next song, Show and Tell. Another very childish activity. Show and Tell. Next song, Show and Tell. Video game trying hard to beat the stage. Oh, while well, I am still collecting coins. Trying hard to save the girl. So I don't go nowhere. Tell me you love me, but you treat me like Hold on. You pull me by my hair so I don't go nowhere. Tell me you love me. You treat me like I'm never there. So it's a song about abuse. Okay? Authentic. Wow. Remarkable. 20, what, 24 years old, by the way? Dude, you can't be serious with this shit, right? Oh, awkward indeed. Yeah, this is. Oh, man. Yo, she said the words. Oh my god, guys, she said the words. We live in a society, dude. I ponder of something great. My lungs will fill and then deflate. It's about her fans. Wait, this is real? This is about her fans? Hold on. You pull me by my hair so I don't go anywhere. Tell me you love me, but you treat me like I'm never there. You say the cruelest words used to break my heart because I'm over here working my ass off. Why is it so hard? I cut myself, I would bleed. I'm just like you. You're just like, oh, I see. I'm on display for all you fuckers to see. Hold on a second. She's cooking. Guys, she's cooking. Is this a fan diss track? 
Hold on a second, you guys. She might be cooking. Harsh words, buy and sell, like I'm a product to society. Art don't sell. I mean, just to be fair, the most edgy fucking sound palette in the entire world definitely doesn't help. But I, I get what's happening here. You beg and cry for more. He had him on the floor. Guys, I get it. She's saying that she is like a product of abuse because of how her fans want her to make more music. It's true. She's saying that the way that she is treated by her fans is like the equivalent of being a victim of abuse. That's, bro, that's... I do remind you, this was after all the allegations, by the way. Like, this came out two years afterwards. It's, that being said, though, this should have died off. This entire thing should have died off when Suicide Squad 2016 was a flop. You know, when people realized that that was a mistake. It, it wasn't a flop, but it was a sure as hell a mistake, okay? Man, and I, and I know she means well, but she can't help it. She can't help that she sounds like a melodramatic, overdramatic crybaby. Like, really. I don't think she, she even has the, the opportunity to, like, self-reflect here. I think it's just straight ass because, like, it's just ass. Especially with all the shit she's put other people through. To make the entire song about herself and how the fans are making her feel instead of how she's making these other people act? Not good. Dog. Brad, did you know you were a maidenless incel? LOL. <coughs> oh, shit. Sticks and stones may break. <laughs> no, my journey is not over. There's more Melanie Martinez music to listen to. We can't give up yet. We must continue to fight on. I am willing to be put up. I'm willing to put up with being called a maidenless incel if it means that we keep fighting. Next song, Nurse's Office. I think I'm sick. Punch me, just let me go into the nurses of this world. Float away and pale as the loose leaf. Painting a girl from howling out of my. Like, this, this is a good, good, good insight to Melanie Martinez. She gets a paper cut and she goes to the nurse's office, and this is this, this is this is what she makes out of it. Lungs in the snow, yeah, I'm Tired of wishing I was ditching? I mean, are you saying because it's like, because you're sick or you're tired of wishing you were ditching because you hate school? I'll give benefit of the doubt when I can. Can I sit right there? This bitch behind me is cutting my hair. No one's just sit your ass down at the shop. Oh, 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 ah, ah. Now listen. Listen. Here's the thing. Melanie Martinez, again, says... It's all a fantasy for her. Let me tell you right now. I have lived through what people would consider to be like, uh, okay, you know what? I'm just going to put it in simple terms. I'm not even going to just over-dramatize it. School was so bad that many times I wanted to uh, 
you know, let's just say that I didn't want to be here today. School, and that was like pretty much every day for me. It was horrible. It could not be worse. Like the fact that I even made it through, it's like, I, I feel like a goddamn survivor of that shit. It's like, I'm still learning to cope with and recover from how bad it was. And let me tell you right now, every single thing here is like the biggest load of shit and the biggest fantasy fetishization you could possibly have about school and making yourself like the, the main character protagonist of this shit. So straight up, like I just listened to this and I'm not even offended. I'm just like, I'm just calling it out for being complete bullshit because that's what it sounds like to me. It's what it sounds like to my ears. The music just sounds like a bunch of fraud crap. Like it doesn't sound authentic, so it's not like I can even relate to any of this garbage. I faked up a seizure? Bro. You guys want to see my imitation of faking a seizure? You guys ready? Here it goes. <laughs> I'm just kidding, you guys. I wouldn't do that. <laughs> they hate me so i'm faking you know that sounds oddly familiar they hate me so i'm faking when, when do i feel like i've heard that before you know where do i think i could relate that to i i just i i don't know <laughs> Why are these sound effects in this music? They sound terrible, bro. I'm not gonna lie, this is definitely me, definitely me when I'm drinking a jar of my own piss. Guys, Melanie Martinez in a one-man play on the nurse's office. This is where she passes away, stands up, and gives a bow. Oh my god. I don't know music theory, but I know what that is. That is the spooky chords. I mean, something scary is happening. Oh! Oh! Ah! Yeah, a million men, that's right. Uh, child exploitation. Someone said that a million men is about how a five-year-old gets sold into, like, sex slavery. I want to listen to that song. Why? Because it's going to make her look even worse. You want me to... I'll, be, I'll just be honest with you. Hey, what's up, you guys? This song is so awful, so triggering, so terrible that I'm actually not going to show any of it. And I'm just going to skip to the reaction of it because, uh, yeah, it's actually so horrifically offensive um, that I don't even want it in my video. Oh, wow. Yeah, whimsical and magical, guys. <sighs> not even subtle. Yeah, that's about as disturbing as possible. I'm definitely going to give a warning before that, but we're not continuing that. Someone asked this, would you rather have Ronnie Radke, have a Ronnie Radke son or a Melanie Martinez daughter? Ronnie Radke's son, for sure. You know why? Because Ronnie Radke, I feel like, doesn't know any better. Actually, Melanie Martinez also doesn't know any better. You know what? How about I just get a vasectomy? Besides Melanie Martinez, what artists do you think make music for the R15, uh, R I'm 14, This Is Deep? Everyone in this era, like 21 Pilots is doing it, Panic at the Disco was pulling in, a bunch of people like this. Um, I mean, like this, this was just the trend. Everyone wanted to make like the edgiest garbage at this time. There was like, you know, Fall Out Boy wanted to do that at this time. Like everyone was just jumping on the train of like, ooh, this dark and spooky aesthetic is here. Halsey. No, AJR, see, here's the thing about AJR, and let me tell you right now, and I, I was even thinking about making a video on this. I was even thinking of making a video that was just like the Melanie Martinez apology one, but like actually sincere about AJR, because I don't like their music, but they seem well, and they seem like they have a great fan base. Like, their fan base seems like actually like genuinely good people. It is like the antithesis of this, where the music I find equally is unlistenable, but like for some reason, they just attract much better people. Exactly. Annoying but harmless. 
See, that's the thing. Annoying but harmless. They're like flies. Melanie Martinez fans are like wasps. They're like wasps. Okay, you see flies, you'd be like, oh, oh, oh. You see wasps, you're like, ah, ah, ah. <laughs> Palsy, oh God. Yeah, wow. This is quite literally, I stub my toe and I can see, I can see the ghost of Morgan Freeman right now. Red headphones. Dog. Oh, that's the thing about Tyler Joseph, all right? Melanie Martinez didn't release a trench, all right? I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I don't think Melanie Martinez has it in her to release a trench. I've dealt with horrible depression in high school. Thank you for talking about your struggles and being a great example of rising above. I mean, I'm glad I'm able to do that. I, I seriously am taking pride in, like, actually doing something good for people. So, it feels nice. Brett, comparing anyone to Melanie Martinez fans makes them look like saints. We're, we're, we're doing something positive by throwing Melanie Martinez fans under the bus. It's true. Is Melanie Martinez fan base the worst you've ever dealt with? Yes, it's not even close. Yo, thank you, Jim. It's literally not even close. Like, I've never seen anything worse. Like, it's, it, there is not even, like, a close runner-up. Not even a close runner-up. Next bro, next song is literally called Drama Club. It's called Drama Club. Everyone's so soft, everyone's so sensitive. Do I offend you? You're hanging on my sentences. You could keep your costume and you could keep your mask. I'm gonna take a bow so you can kiss my ass. Wow. Wait, maybe this is a song addressing all the uh, allegations. Someone said, uh, so here's what happened, all right? I called uh, the allegations, you know, to be serious or whatever. It's like, oh, now all of a sudden, you know, that's abuse. It's not drama. Apparently, I said it was this whole situation we were dealing with was drama. And I clarified. I said, yes, us as outsiders dealing with somebody else's situation is drama. Now, as a result of saying that, the Melanie Martinez fans were disgusted. They were like, oh, my God, look at this guy. He just called abuse drama, right? They were they were like they, they were they were devastated by this by this by this comment now listen this song if i had to guess is about that exact same situation but it's calling it drama from the person who it literally was involved with now now you may say bradley that's a bit of a reach you're right but i want it to be true so it is true in my head brad is braver than any u.s marine melanie stands are the most terrifying people on the planet it's true they are all right. Sign up for your drama, up for your drama, up for your drama club. You're a wizard of Oz disguise. Do you even have a brain? You're sticking to a page. You're faking all your pain. Yeah, you're bleeding on a stage. I never. Your entire existence is fake. Everything you speak is made up. Damn, man, I'm just, I'm just saying, man, there is not a single word here that is even, I'm just saying, man. I never signed up for your drama club, for your drama club. I never signed up for your drama club. For your drama club. I never signed up for your drama club, for your drama club, for your drama club. I never signed up for your drama club, for your drama club, for your drama club. I don't want to be an actress. I don't like music that's actively, yeah, gaslighting me. So this is this is kind of torture right now. I feel like she's talking to you. I feel like she's directly speaking to me through this song. Which I mean, shit. As the as the perpetrator of this so-called drama, I gotta say, and as a music critic, I don't personally enjoy this. All right, hey, and it's just my own personal opinion, uh, but I don't enjoy this. Uh, this, uh, being, uh, be being gaslit like this. Oh. Oh. When I was in jail, I was low-key. Shout out to supporters that wrote me. When I was in jail, I was low-key. Shout out to supporters that wrote me. Flew work out of them ghost sleep. You and Brady Perry in both feet. Take us know we got God with us. You look at me and see a God figure. And when I talk about it, I know that he with me. And I always catch a heart shiver. I know his demons in that dark liquor. Seriously, Melanie pretends to critique child exploitation while exploiting childhood. It's so fake. Have another five for your troubles. Thank you. You guys are amazing. Making this all worth it. Which, by the way, because the last video was uh, funded so much by Super Chats, I actually... So, usually when I'm editing a video, I'll try to splice it so that I'm able to make money off of the video. Uh, like, by having it not get copyright detected. 
But because there was so much super, set, super chat support in the last video, I decided to cut that entirely and just make the video the way that it was, which was pretty much how I wanted it to be. So I'm going to be doing the same thing for this video, uh, thanks to the overwhelming support. Problem with her is that she doesn't sound genuine at all. At least Tyler Joseph has actual intention. Yeah, I mean, Tyler Joseph, too, it's like, usually it's about positive subjects, not literally shitting on people and shooting them down. It's usually actually trying to lift people up. Never signed up. Man, rap today fuckers suck bad. I don't give a fuck what anybody says. These fools ain't spitting no type of dope shit. But that's not even the bad part. They're not even saying words anymore. They just got a hard ass fucking beat to trick dumbasses like you to make you think you like the shit. Like, turn on reverb and my auto tune all the This is what the fuck they be doing. <laughs> I love that sound bite. Dude, I love being gaslit. The whole song is simply this. I'm just living my life, doing my own thing. I never signed up for any of this drama. Now, let me ask you real quick. What do you think that's referring to? Just if you had to take a wild guess. Just remember that this was written post-2017. Just, you know, just throwing that out there. What do you think this is involved in? I'm just saying, what do you think that the Melanie Martinez fan base who is following along with her and what she's doing, what do you think they're interpreting out of this? I'm, I'm literally just saying that, like, this. Okay, I'm just, man, rap today fucking sucks bad. I don't give a shit what anybody says. Fools ain't spitting no type of dope shit. It's not even the bad part. They're not even saying words anymore. Strawberry Shortcake is the name of this next song. Uh, I feel like I might have heard this one somewhere. I don't even know. Feeling unsure of my naked body. Stand back, watch it taking shape. I mean, here's the thing, though, is I understand exactly what this is going for, and I don't think this is a sexualization. I think that this is actually a message from a woman asking why her body isn't uh, developing in the way that other people's are. So, immediately, I'm just going to put that out there that I actually do understand this one. I mean, it is easy since everyone's just, it's been like a nonstop runaway freight train and negativity. Um, but I think it's worth pointing that out, that this one does seem oh, like it's coming from a genuine place. Just because it says the word naked, I don't think it means that it's immediately uh, to be she shut down. Is this about kindergarten or no? No, this one's definitely about, like, being a teenager and, like, growing up. But look around the room, whoever wants me. See, this is like, um, it's like Big Mouth, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, because just like Big Mouth... You know, I'm feeling What's the problem? <laughs> Guys, what's the problem, guys? Melanie, sweep, gaslight, girl boss. Like the easy skin before. I said, home to change because my skirt is too short. Gonna insert myself here to one of my favorite moments of my entire life. Uh, one, of the few one of the few moments as a kid where I think I was actually funny. I was trying to be funny 24 7, but this is one of the few times I succeeded. Uh, I actually was in a K through eight school uh, for my last year of um, of uh, middle school, basically. So for eighth grade, uh, and what happened was it was extremely strict due to the fact that there were a lot of young kids there. Now I remind you, uh, this was of course the year where all the white kids were saying the N words, so they were not doing a very good job at uh, enforcing this. It didn't seem like any of the teachers cared. But realistically, here's the thing, okay? We were all put in a room. 
because they needed to shove a bunch of rules down our throat. And I kind of knew what was coming of this entire situation, right? I knew the school system well enough. I had a father who was a teacher. And so, man, you you just know when they're about to say something and you know that, like, you're thinking of hopping in and saying something when they say it. That was the whole, that was the situation here. They had the entire, uh, like, I don't know, maybe it was like sixth through eighth grade in a single room. It was very small, very small school. Uh, but then they started bringing up, girls, you need to be careful about your dress code. Uh... Yeah, I see you wearing like super short shorts and your ass is hanging out. And they said, guys, you don't want to see that, right? It was my cue. I said, I don't mind. Just straight up out loud out of nowhere. Bro, eruptions of laughter from everybody, including the teachers, because they knew what they were saying was total bullshit. And bam, man, everyone loved me. The end. I was the hero of the entire story of life that day okay but actually that was one of my favorite moments ever just everyone fucking dying just it was perfect it was it was it was it was perfect perfect i remember you was conflicted misusing your misusing the single time you were called a crybaby sometimes i did the same abusing twitter full of resentment resentment that turned into two albums and a movie oh my god yo Bro, that's fucking fire, dude. Yo, guys, holy shit, he cooking. Excuse me? Got boys acting like they... Hold on. Look around the room to whoever wants me. Got boys acting like... So, hold on. Justin, okay, so she's... She dressed up uh, and showed a lot of skin at school. It's my fault because I put icing on top. Now the boys want a taste of the strawberry... Wasn't she saying that she has, like, oh, maybe it is, like, a, no matter, even if she looks good, it's, like, okay, I get what this is going for. Okay, this chorus, though, I really don't. Oh, see, this is how you know this is not authentic or genuine because it's this. This is exactly what I was saying with, like, Jax. Again, I love you, Jax. I'm sorry I made you cry. Listen, when you make it this obvious and when you point it out this much, then it just sounds like preaching. Whether or not you intended that or not, it's like, it's just so on the nose. When you have to say, because it's how I look and not how I think, is just like the biggest, like no teenagers thinking that, especially not when they're enamored by boys' attention. That is not exactly how they're working. This is going from like plot point to plot point as if you're in the shoes of the person and then you're like the shoes of the person giving a moral. It doesn't work. She was made up by a dude. Dude, I heard that song at the gym the other day and I realized that I think I have a little bit of trauma from Jax calling me out publicly on her TikTok. Because I hear that song now and I'm like, holy shit. Damn, she really did that, huh? She really put me on blast like that. I mean, of course, I, I, I'm i definitely not a victim in the situation. But I definitely was, you know, taken aback hearing that that music again. I was like, wow. She ate, bro, she ate me up, bro. She's like, I'm bigger than you. She stomped on me, man. Why do you think you know what teenage girls think? Are you talking about me? Because I'm actually not critiquing that at all. I actually, I agree with the message. And I think this is the best song so far. I associate this album with a horrible time in my life. Thank you for making this entire experience bearable. Thank you. No, I actually think that this is one of the most um, well-meaning songs of the entire album that actually like seems to overall do something positive. And this is, I think, the least offensive track of the entire album. Just teach him to keep it in his pants and tell him to stop. Saying it's my fault. Exactly, it's not self serving, but it actually makes sense as like being a tail. So I get it. Well, I was actually coming out here to pick up the cupcake. Yo, they shot her. What the fuck? Yo, they. Yo, guys, they shot her. She didn't deserve that. I don't think I didn't notice you changing the soundbite of the last. Oh yeah, I did. Yeah, very much so.
Songs a strong shrug, best song so far. Um, hopefully you can see that I don't necessarily just have it out for this project, but I do think that there is like, when, when it does it right, it does it okay. And I think that this song meant well. And I think that sure, it's a little bit, still a bit shaky with some of the lines in there. I get what it's going for. And I think the song sounds okay. Lunchbox friends. Oh, I get it. So this is going to be um, nobody, nobody, I can't sit next to anyone in the cafeteria, the song, which I promise you, Melanie probably wasn't that kid. But again, you know, I'm making, I'm, you know what? I shouldn't make assumptions. I'm just saying, though, you know. He said, hey, girl, will you sit with me? Table in the back cafeteria seat. We can be friends if you want to be. But only till the clock is three. After long, oh my God. we can walk to class. Talk about the boys that we want. Sorry, Melody literally comes off as the kind of person who would be this person. I'm, I know it's like a total bullshit assumption, and I accept that. And I accept that this is not a critique, but, but in my personal opinion, she comes off as the kind of person who's like the opposite of this. Who's like speaking on the person who she'd done wrong. But it doesn't even seem like it's coming from a place of sympathy. It seems like it's from a place of pity. And it's gross. DJ Khaled, we the best! Who we know? I can't do this. This song is so annoying. Holy shit, man. Again, I remember I used to like Melanie. I used to uh, I used to like her songs mainly because I thought there was stuff like a couple of little did she say the trauma and others. It's just an aesthetic. I feel like an idiot. I mean, I feel I feel like an idiot even knowing this shit. Have you ever heard the saying ignorance is bliss? I'm telling you right now. If I could just like accept this for what it is and not listen to this and say this sounds like absolute bullshit, then I would be having a much better time and a much better experience. And let me tell you right now, I'd be a lot more popular. I mean, shit, I'm doing pretty well now, but you know how much I've had to grind through that? It's It's been through telling you my honest opinion on things. Unfortunately, I can't just sit here and be like, wow, this is really deep and relatable. Her entire discography consists of says cool sounding line bass drop. Yeah, that's millennial pop for you. We the best music! DJ Kevin! We the best! Who? We the Wow, that was amazing. That was the equivalent of an AJR song. Just straight up, it was an AJR song. I mean, I ain't even gonna lie. It's just an AJR song, but it's about uh, being a woman in school with no authentic qualities whatsoever. It's a red headphones. Dog. Orange juice. What's wrong with orange juice? I like orange juice, okay? It's tasty. Why is everyone freaking out about this song? It's not even low rated. It's one of the higher rated on the album. Oh, eating disorder. Uh oh, oh. Uh, it's about bulimia, but it's clumsy about it. Oh, I don't want to listen to this one, guys. I'm gonna be honest with you. I don't. I don't want to listen to this. Also, it starts off like that one Eminem song where he, where it starts off with him puking in the toilet. So I think that's also a bad sign. Oh, oh, stick it down your throat. I'm watching from the bathroom, making sure I. Mom spaghetti. Now you sitting in the cafeteria. Man, rap today fucking sucks bad. I don't give a fuck what anybody said. These fools ain't spitting no type of dope shit. But that's not even the bad part. They're not even saying words anymore. They just got a hard ass fucking beat to Oh. Oh, that's why it's called that. You turn you turn oranges into orange juice. So we're going to take bulimia and make it a catchy little tune, huh? I know for a fact Melanie was not the only person to work on a song like this. Hold on a second. 
Yeah, exactly. So, oh, wow, wait, there was someone who helped her and assisted her with writing this entire album. That actually makes a lot of sense. That's why things seemed a little bit different with this project. I wouldn't say they're better, but they're definitely trying to be catchier. That actually explains so much. Same guy, apparently his biggest hit was Me, Myself, and I with uh, g Easy and BB Rexa. Uh, but yeah, Michael Keenan. Your body is perfectly perfect. Everyone's with the other ones working. No Ew. Oh God, why? Come on, man. Why you gotta do this, man? You're already kicking them down. You're already using their disability as like, you know, a fucking necklace around you. I, I, I don't need to listen to you fucking make a catchy little post-chorus with this shit, man. God, why? Used to date Michael? Wait, hold on. How is how old is Michael? 33 years old. That's actually that's a six year gap. As much as I want to talk shit about that, that's the gap my parents have. So shit, wait, what if I'm wait, oh my god. What if I'm the what if I'm a product of the problem, guys? What if my existence is the issue? Guys. Like, because here's the thing is, I actually understand bulimia, like, from hearing, like, other people's accounts of it, right? It's like, a, it's like a feeling of an addiction in a way. And this is just so completely disingenuous. This is, this is awful, dude. This part about this is Melanie is actually bulimic and still manages to sound hollow. Wait, really? This shit's real? Why do you think it's disingenuous? Well, let's start with the fact that the sound of the song is absolutely disgusting, right? Like, let's, let's start with that, all right? It's, it's awful to listen to. It's like the worst beat ever with just like... But then like she's singing softly over it. She also glamorizes the CD on Crybaby referencing a cotton ball diet on Sippy Cup. Ugh, I can't, I can't. It's, it's all just edgy. Like, it's all just trying to be edgy with it. And it just makes me want to... She's here to fix you. She's here to fix you, you guys. Guys, she's the savior. Guys, that's all they need. They just need to see through Melanie Martinez's eyes so that they can know that they have a problem. And that will fix everything. Guys, this is this is brilliant. It's cured. No, you look good. Exactly. Eating disorder figured out. We beat the CEO of ED, you guys. Yeah, I've heard enough. That was terrible and offensive and very difficult to listen to. And I don't think it's for the reason that they intended it. It's actually just really... Un it's just disgusting. Like, just really inauthentic. All right. And if it is authentic, then it's very misinformed. All right, next song we have is called Detention. Yeah, it's your boy, Lil D. Wait, can I really see the in one of my... Girl, you know I want your love. Your love was handmade for somebody like me. Come around, I'm on my lead. I'm the new news on my knee, said boy. Somebody like you. Come on now, follow my lead. Come on now, follow my lead. I'm in love with the shape of you. Something pull like a magnet, too. I'm in love with your body. Brother struggled with an ED a few years ago. This song is actually offensive to me. Here's 69 checks, crowds. Thank you for your troubles. Thank you. I appreciate you paying me for listening to this shit. Anyways, am I supposed to go back? I'm not the bad. I'm not a bad guy. Oh, that's always how you. That's always a good way to start off a song. I'm not a bad guy. Anyways, how much money did I make this stream? Four hundred dollars. 
even when Melanie's trying to be heartfelt or serious, she knows uh, she only knows how to write about things in the most condescending way possible. Of course, that's why she made herself the main character of of you know tra childhood trauma when she knows not the first thing about it. But she decides to take it as like uh, upon her to be like a character study, in which again. In her own words, she said it was hard for her to separate herself from the character. You know probably why that is? It's because people felt bad for her. I can feel your blood pressure. Bro, she's got blood pressure detectors now in her in her brain. It's like a sixth sense. Uh, baby, can you meet me tonight in detention? Wait, what? Hold on. Wait, is this supposed to be like a sex song about... Wait, like two bad people who are like... Oh yeah, girl, I'm bad, girl. God damn, this shit sucks. The teachers don't care about me. Fuck how I feel as long as I make money. The teachers don't care about you as long as you make money? Excuse me? Okay, let's just stop for a second. The teachers don't care about Melanie as long as she makes money. Can you, can someone explain what kind of sensible person has this line of thinking? Maybe it is because like, think about it like this. Even someone who's like, they don't care about me as long as they get money. That's from a place of sadness and frustration, right? Feeling like you've been let down by the system. Right? So It's supposed to be about a record label. Oh, why would you make it about teachers and detention? Bro, you can't be fucking serious, dude. This is what I mean. Like, the translation here is just terrible. They don't care. Teachers don't care about me as long as they make money. There's, yeah, because it's, but like, it's supposed to be school. Oh my god. I have these thoughts so often I ought to replace that slot with what I once bought Cause somebody stole my car radio and now I just sit in silence Stop calling on my phone trying to say that I've been out of life When all I ever asked was to go to the bathroom I can't, dude, what is this supposed to- You know what, I don't even know anymore. I don't even know if Melanie knows. But this just doesn't work. Like, it quite literally is just, like, devolved into self-victimization because she isn't able to actually put how she feels into words that, like, a normal person would. So it's just, like, turned into this whole classroom fantasy, and I'm just like, what the fuck is the point of any of this? DJ Khaled! Anyways, that was dog shit. Red headphones, get me the fuck out of this crap. Dog. I get what she's going for, but wow. Could you not take it to, like, rate the album's best to worst? Okay, worst one, Crybaby. Easily. Um, second to worst, Portals, for sure. And this one's the best, by far. I'd say so far this album's like a 2 out of 10. Pretty good for Melanie Martinez standards. This song's called Teacher's Pet, which is probably also even more fetishization. Alright, here we go. There's certain kinds of Japanese street fashion called a uh, sweet Lolita that Melanie just rips off. Sweet Lolita isn't meant to be sexual, but Melanie sexualizes it for the mainstream. Sounds sounds actually like a very American thing to do with Japanese culture. It's called Teacher's Pet. Here's another 10. Thank you, Ghost Bones. I think I've got mixed personalities. Okay, so I have personal experience with this one. I haven't been involved, but I knew teachers. Um, so let's just say that, like, you ever as a kid can just tell when something's wrong with a motherfucking teacher? You know what I'm saying? Like, you can just tell when something's off with a motherfucker. You could just say, like, this guy is spending less time talking about math and more time talking to his softball team about other things. You know what I'm saying? Now listen, okay? Listen. Oh, they were creepy, all right, but here's the thing. Usually nothing comes of that, right? <laughs> I remember watching the news and seeing this teacher get, I don't even remember, I think it might have been eight years 
for sex with a student. If if not more. That's what I remember. Like years later seeing that. Just seeing their ugly mugshot on the fucking news and just having my jaw on the floor. Like wow. So, yeah. Yeah, it's 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 not a fun subject to be joking about. You know, it's really not. I knew him. Of course I knew him. I was forced to be in his fucking class and it was terrible. I didn't like the guy. My sister, my sister, I think even did softball with him. And she was telling like, she was talking about how he's always creepy with the girls. And my dad even saw that. She was like, yeah, this guy, get the fucking heebie jeebies off of him. And boom, what do you know? Did you thought that they were just there for a cupcake? Yeah. Used to teach and some, uh, and some played favorites. Yep. Well, that was definitely more than playing favorites. I feel like. She bit her lip back to him, chewing on her nails and her pens. So yeah, this is going to be a fantasy of that, isn't it? And Melanie Martinez is, of course, the uh, person watching it all unfold. While she's dreaming of him, and he's fucking in sin. You know he is. Baby, don't care about gray, just call me your lady. If I pass this quiz, will you give me your babies? Okay, I've heard enough. <laughs> my high school biology teacher was considered the hot teacher by my peers. He was later fired for inappropriate relations with a student. <sighs> Don't call me crazy. You love me, but you won't come save me. You got a wife and kids, you see them daily. Don't know why. Melanie was actually not bulimic. You took a few articles at face value. You were wrong. It's like, it's just, it just doesn't get, it just doesn't get worse. I missed the worst line. How does it even get worse than what I left at? Tell me, I know I'm young, but my mind is well beyond my year. I mean, look, in, I don't even know if intentions matter anymore at this point. You know what I'm saying? Yes, officer, the song's right here. I don't know if this is supposed to try to be shedding light on this situation, but it just straight up sounds like a sex fantasy, so. I mean, I think it's supposed to be in the perspective of the victim. The only problem is, is like the whole song sounds like it would be straight off of the Fifty Shades of Grey soundtrack. Uh, so yeah, in other words, um, I'm just going to let you guys listen while I eat gummy worms. Hey, so Oh yeah, a lot of people thought I was playing up the hatred. Bro, and everyone who, who like pops in and looks is like, Oh, shit! Oh, hopping, you don't know me. You don't know me. By the way, something I've learned as I've gotten older. I feel like a lot of kids think this. That they're young and their mind is well beyond their years. It's not a thing. That doesn't exist. As I've gotten older, I learned that that is complete and utter bullshit. That's just another thing you think as a kid. It just isn't true. So please, for the love of God, no. Being smart is not being mature. You can't fake yourself into maturity. When I was young, I knew some people who were very charismatic, and I thought that that meant they were more mature than me. There was this guy, I was 16 years old, he was 17, and he was a charmer. This guy was like a smooth talker like crazy. And I thought he was like the most mature, like he understood his emotions so much, but nah. He just had a different set of characteristics than me. That was it. 
just shuffled around. You can't fake, you, you, you can't cheat time, you know? You really can't. Did you guys like it? Did you, did you enjoy being subjected to that uncomfortable experience? Dog And thank you so much, Jim, for the consolation prize. Hoo-ha! Thank you for being part of the Brad Army. You, are you happy? Reasonably. What would make you unhappy? If this lady keeps sexualizing children. Okay. Next song, High School Sweethearts. Oh, God. <laughs> uh, I don't think he was very happy. Oh, it's five minutes long, too. Yeah, bro, I gotta find that gummy worm. So, I wanna go do that. I'm just so tired of the really awkward and unnecessary swearing, which does not make me, like, respect the artist anymore or want to listen to them anymore at all. Brad, read the Super Chats. Wait, what's Super Chat? I will rip fucking Every artist swear, bro. That's not even true at all. Not even close to it. And definitely not as liberally as Melanie Martinez does in her pop music. My ex played this song for me at the beginning of our relationship and told me this is exactly what I should expect from him. So glad uh, to be away. One. Be up the side of the road and I'm all too. Down on the finish line. Step three. High school sweethearts. Shut up. I love how she says high school sweethearts in a song where she's supposed to be a high schooler. Like, you know, that that makes total sense right there. Yes, like girl boss. Guys, just know that if you don't like this song because it's supposed to be high school love, that you're actually trans ageist. These are the requirements. If you think you can be my one and only true love. He's way too old to be doing this shit, man. Dog. Peaked in high school core. It's supposed to be like she's playing a character that's like emotionally unstable, but it's just not fun to listen to and it's really cringe. So. Edgy, it's gross, I hate everything about it. Next song, Recess. Let's get this over with, because I have to shit. Which will probably smell, feel, and sound better than this entire album, let's be honest. I was too young to see the truth These sound effects are just so annoying throughout this entire thing. This entire album is just glorifying a school experience that never happened. Recess is one of the more humble and uh, appropriate moments of this entire project, just kind of coming off as final advice from the grandmother to the kid, which is just whatever. Red headphones. 
Now, this album is the best Melanie Martinez album I've heard thus far. It really is. By a tiny margin. Feeling a solid two. Which is, due to the production being pretty solid, though, it just sounds like pop music with absolutely awful subjects going for it. Now, again, I have to shit really bad. So, uh, if we stream again, it's going to be in a bit. Um, but I really got to go. Like, you have no idea, man.